and for time to let me finish my speech. Hi, my name is Di Rathman and I spoke here for the first time this past June. I'm tired. <laughs> I think we're all tired. It's been a very long year and a half. Our world has changed dramatically and things continue to change almost daily. I know it can be difficult sometimes to navigate through all the information that bombards us regarding our health and our rights. And I appreciate and acknowledge the struggles we've endured in order to make informed decisions for our families and for those we serve. I have been an RN for over 35 years, working steadily throughout this time. Since the beginning, I have been reading the research regarding the infection, treatments, masks, and vaccines. I continue to read a lot. I have here one printout of 47 studies that confirm the ineffectiveness of masks for COVID and 32 more that confirm their negative health effects. Another printout has 36 more articles against recommending cloth mask use. Still another study shows that while wearing masks, the carbon dioxide levels in children aged 6 to 17 was 3 to 6 times greater than acceptable levels. And the lab analysis of the masks themselves after just one day of wear revealed the presence of at least one of 11 different dangerous pathogens that cause pneumonia, TB, meningitis, sepsis, legionnaires disease, antibiotic resistant bacterial infections, as well as those that cause ulcers, acne, yeast infections, strep throat, and more. So, therefore, this year, my child will not wear one on a bus, not in a car, not in a class, not in a hall. Not for sports or just because my child will not wear a mask at all. We will not wear them here or there. We will not wear them anywhere. <laughs> are mistaken. We are standing together and we are standing up. We will not be bullied, coerced, threatened, bribed, or forced to get this injection either. If someone chooses to get it, that is their choice. We choose not to participate in this experiment. You do you, we'll do us. The end. No separation, no shame, no accusations of indifference or harm to others. We are standing together, and we are standing up. While I am aware of some of the progress being made regarding the issues of critical race theory, or diversity, equity, and inclusion, or social emotional learning, or whatever name you want to give it, know this. We will not be lied to or passively believe you when you say it is currently not taught in rural schools. The well-being sur survey that was given to our kids last spring was all about racism gender diversity, how much is talked about in school or with friends and family, and even giving the choice to say, are you male, female, non-binary, third gender, or other? How many genders do you say they are? This survey was approved by you, Nate. And when I questioned you, Dan, about how this was CRT, you said you didn't really know anything about that. In June, Dan, you said that CRT was currently not taught in whole schools, and yet I find out about a mandatory Zoom in-service in for all teachers, led by a black woman who kept referring to you all as you white folk, and after saying it was a safe place to share, called you all racists. Enough. Not in our schools. This is Marxist, and it is racist. This does not belong in our schools or our community. And if you can't research the political ideologies of the people you are putting on the committees for advising curriculum, then you shouldn't be the curriculum director. There also needs to be oversight on the books that are going and available in the classrooms and libraries that promote the hypersexualization of our kids. There needs to be equal representation for all sides at the table. We will no longer remain silent. We are standing together and we are standing up. We ask you to do what is right. Please stop pushing fear, political agendas, and bad science onto our kids. Get back to the basics of teaching and let the parents do the parenting. We've had enough. 
We are standing together and we are standing up. <laughs>